Hi folks, Will at LR Workshop. This is the third video of the trilogy of uh, the Q&A videos. This is the last one for Michael, about what tools I carry in my Defender. There they are in the back of the Defender, all strapped up. And they've been in there so long that I cannot actually remember what's in there. And I've probably hardly used any of them. Um, but it's all about prep, really, because I've been, I've had about three breakdowns in Defenders in the last 10 years in the UK just going about my normal business. So I kind of pieced this together bit by bit over the years. You kind of think, oh, might need that and you chuck it in. So you're gonna see here the inner, the inner workings of my mind about what I've put in and that may be a little bit embarrassing. I have no idea what we're gonna find, but get your, get your comment fingers ready. I'm sure you're gonna have a lot to say about uh, what you see in here. So let's just go through. This is a warning triangle because sometimes you break down. There we go. These are straps. I do use these quite a bit. I put um, tie down um, tie down loops in the back of the vehicle. So actually, when when I've got like a load of luggage in the back, this is quite handy just to strap stuff down and stop it moving around. So I do use these relatively frequently. Starting with the box. This is a really useful box and. Yeah, they're really useful. The, what's great about these are they're pretty tough and because a lot of plastic things, you, you drop them quite hard. You drop them on the ground, particularly if they've got heavy weight in there and they'll shatter in the bottom. Really useful boxes don't do that. They're, they're very well constructed. You can sit on this and it won't break. Um, and these tall ones are good. They've got a high top on them. So they fit bottles and things like that. So uh, extra pair of work gloves, you never know. High visibility jacket, just kind of a bit helpful perhaps if you're standing on the side of the road. Coolant, now I do actually use this fair amount because I've got a slow leak in my uh, in my cooling system. So this is quite handy sometimes. Uh, this is uh, pre-mix. I always buy concentrate and mix it with distilled water. I don't use tap water. That's what I'm gonna do. Uh, power steering fluid. To be honest, I'd never really top this up. so. I could probably take that out and not really worry about it. Uh, gear all 75W90. So this is ideally for the transfer box, but you could put it in the diffs as well if needs be. I had this because I went to Scotland once and the transfer box got quite low and uh, I didn't have any. So following that, I put that in it. Uh, I could, probably could put MTF8, uh, MTF94 in here as well for the gearbox, um, but it's a bit trickier to get that in the fill that as opposed to getting this stuff in the axles and the, the transfer box. Uh, grease, just a brand new thing of grease. Uh, don't know if I need to use that. I wouldn't plan on doing wheel bearings out and about. Kind of same thing, prop shaft grease, a canister here, a cartridge of this. This is probably isn't useful because I don't carry a grease gun around with me, so <laughs> that's probably a waste of space. Um, Bits and pieces, uh, just a bit of tube, no remnants of a spray can. And this stuff is basically a temporary, um, you stick it in the radiator if you've got a leak. And I've got that because I did blow the radiator on a motorway once on the hottest day of the year. And this may have helped. Other people say you can put, you can crack an egg in it and there's all sorts of things, but this would have been able to get me home. As it was, I had to go on the back of a back of a flatbed to um, cure that one. So I just put this in here on the off chance that it might actually make a difference were that to happen again. Right, that box has now become a very handy, handy stool. Let's look in here. These are kind of like old army things and I, I bought them at Newbury Spares Day and I kind of wanted to use them for something. And is for jump leads. They're kind of handy. Um, although I've got a video to publish about these soon and I should probably replace them because they are crap. But you'll see that video hopefully soon. Right, so this is my, essentially, oh, it's quite a weight, this thing. That probably weighs 12 kilos, 10, yeah, 12, maybe 14 kilos, that. Um, old used toolbox, this is uh, American, this one. American toolbox from a, a friend of the family. This was, this was my toolbox before I went to the uh, big, to the big Halfords 
tool chest. So let's go. What have I got in here? So, right, get a bit of focus perhaps. Screwdrivers, lots of screwdrivers. You can never have enough screwdrivers. Got both sets of sockets. These are essentially my old uh, old socket wrenches, three eighths and half inch drive. Half inch is good because you can get it into your axles and trouser box, fill plugs with this. Um, yeah, I just put, so these are like the, I've put all my old tools in here as, as I've upgraded tools, the old ones go in here. Multimeter, this is my old multimeter, but it can be handy just seeing if you've got, uh, this is particularly handy for like diagnosing solenoid, fuel solenoid problems, just if you're out on the road, because they can cause you to stop the engine starting, so it's good handy to see where you got voltage. Similar thing with lights as well, but. Uh, mirror, that can be handy sometimes. Uh, just for looking around gaps. Magnet on a stick, telescopic magnet. That was pretty handy actually, dropping bolts, that kind of stuff. Uh, paintbrush and a pencil. A bit of silica gel just to stop it all rusting so much. Yeah, AA card, old AA card. Uh, and here's a multi tool. So um, I have these in it, these are pliers, just a, a cheapy multi tool. And I need I need pliers basically when we're in this because the 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 jack actually what's not in here but under the footwell is the defender uh, bottle jack and the the wheel chock and I don't have the handle for it I have to use the wheel wrench to jack up the uh, bottle jack and so therefore I don't have the adapter on the end of it to turn the screw on the bottle jack so I use these for that and it's handy having pliers anyway. A bit of uh, some earbuds. This is, I think, this is all the old stuff I had in my toolbox and uh, insulation tape. And I put cardboard in it to try and stop it rattling around so much, to try and insulate some of the noise. Looking in the bottom, then, uh, got an old pair of shorts with, um, with some puppies on, dogs. There we go. That's to stop everything rattling around. Um, Bit of blue roll so you can clean your hands up because that's always the thing you get all this stuff then you're out and about in the middle of nowhere and you need to wipe your dirty hands off can be quite tricky what have we got in here sockets sockets and little spanners because all the fiddly stuff tends to be in the engine bay and you need little spanners so they're quite handy these are just generic uh millimeter a set, an old set of uh, millimeter style uh, metric sockets. This one's quite handy. Uh, it's for the steering wheel. Uh, because when I'm out and about, sometimes I find the steering wheel, I've never can get the steering wheel on straight. So it's only when you're out and about, you think, oh, I just want to move it five degrees to the right or one degree to the left. That becomes quite handy. Tire repair kit. This is actually in here from when we went to Morocco. Uh, in the UK, you'd probably just put the spare on. And um, yeah, I've never used this. Never used it, but I just keep it in there for, for the sake of it, really. Uh, but I'd probably never have to use it. In the bottom, uh, this is the viscous fan hub for the 300 TDI. It's cranked. This one's really handy. It's uh, 32 mil. It also works for the, the uh, gearbox drain plug. And we've got an adjustable spanner. Uh, so I had, a, I had an issue where I was having starting problems and I'd have to, because uh, I think I had air in the fuel lines and I'd had to crank the lift pump or prime the lift pump on the engine. But you can only do that on the 300 TDI when you've got the crank in the right position. And the socket and 20, the 27 mil socket I had and the, the ratchet wouldn't allow me to, to do it from underneath, so I had to take the fan off to then crank the, put, turn the crankshaft round to then get the lever on the, the lift pump. So that's why this is in there. And it was a problem for a couple of months actually, so I just haven't really taken that up since then. Pair of roll grips, you never know when you need to grab something. Set of spanners. These are just, uh, yeah, just my old spanners, various sizes. Extreme tape. 
This is kind of like, what is it, silicon tape, I think, but the idea being that, yeah, silicon, the idea being that you, if you get a coolant hose uh, leak, you can just wrap this stuff around it to, to kind of seal it. You just wrap it up. I mean, it's got it on there, radiator and uh, garden tools. And the idea being, yeah, you just, uh, it can get you, get you out of trouble. You just wrap it up and it seems to be self-heating with the heat generated. It sort of seals itself up. So I think that could be quite handy, similar to the radiator stop leak, because a coolant leak will probably kill you dead. It's not, you know, as long as you haven't got a, you know, oil light come on and you've destroyed your engine. The only other things that tend to stop you in the tracks that could be solvable, uh, potentially oil or water leaks to some extent. I mean, yeah, if you've got a wheel bearing problem, that'll stop you, but you need to be carrying like full set of stuff. I have got, what have I got in here? So fuses, <laughs> tire valve, cap, dust cap, because I always lose those. I always leave them at the petrol station when I go and pump my tires up. Wading plugs. Although to be honest, how many people stop in front of deep water, get out, put these in the crankcase and the timing cover case? I've got two here, but yeah, that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> One of those things. What else have got in there? Stop solenoid. Stop solenoid, because you never know. I've also got uh, a bulb and a bit of rubber, because it can be quite handy sometimes. I've got a spare radiator cap, because that's another thing. If you find yourself boiling out of coolant, it can be very commonly the, the cap that's failed. It doesn't keep the pressure in. More rubber and uh, bulbs, more bulbs, bulbs, bulbs. These are kind of dashboard bulbs in here. Um, there we go. So actually, there's not as much stuff as I was expecting. Some of this stuff is probably dead weight. Uh, I could probably use, get away with not having, well, I could probably get away with not having such a heavy toolbox. Yeah, there we go. I like having fluids because you can always top up if you do a longer journey. That's always handy. But um, yeah, the rest of it. Experience says that, uh, or, you know, the data shows I don't necessarily need all this stuff, but I've got it just as well anyway. And once you put it in there, you kind of think, well, just sod's law. If I take this out, that's going to be it. That'll be the next journey. And I wish I'd, when I'm going to need it and I wish I had it in there. So yeah, I mean, the vehicle's 22 years old now. I've mentioned this before. It's having, it's had or started to have just indiscriminate failures uh, for no reason. And it's probably just a bit of a safety net. So I hope that answers your question. I'd be interested to know what you guys carry in the back of your defenders. Anything you think is missing, anything you think that I definitely, there's no point in me carrying. Um, but bearing in mind, this is a kit just for like running around in the UK. My setup for when we went to Morocco was a lot more comprehensive than this. Maybe even too comprehensive then. I may be able to talk about that at a different point in the future when I get my Morocco series out. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching. Bye for now.